We need to talk about operational security, or as we in the industry call it, OPSEC. OPSEC is the difference between being a ghost or being caught in the act. But before we get into that, I need to thank the sponsor of today's video, Glimpse. As you know, I only promote tools that I actually like, and Glimpse is certainly one of them. It's a malware analysis platform, and it is super private. It's not like other platforms where they're using your data as part of their sales pitch. Glimpse integrates flawlessly into your existing stack, connected to your EDR, NDR, SOAR platform, whatever, it just works. And it doesn't just scan for the easy stuff, the known malware, it uses deep learning technology to pick up on zero day malware as well. And they do highly effective automation of binary analysis and threat detection in the blink of an eye. It's agentless and it can handle tens of millions of files a week on prem or in the cloud. And here's the best part, it's actually easy to use. Anyone across your company can just drag and drop a file into the Glimpse kiosk. The file will be analyzed in seconds, and then they get told whether it's safe to open or not. Simple as that. I've left a link below if you'd like to see it in action. There's a 30 day no obligation free trial. I think you'll love it. Thank you Glimpse for supporting the channel. Let's get back to it. So what things affect your OPSEC and give you away when investigating online? Lots of things, mostly centered around mail tracking, your web browser, or the apps that you're using. For example, when you open an email that has images in it, the images are pulled from a server and presented to you in the email. It just happens so fast, you don't even really notice it. And this is when some genius came up with the idea of tracking pixels. They realized they could make a one by one pixel image that is stored at a unique URL somewhere. They put it inside your email, and when your mail app downloads that image, it can only mean one thing. You opened the email. No one else on earth had that URL. Now they're not doing this manually, obviously. That doesn't scale. Tracking pixels are a part of all of the major email platforms. And they do a lot more than this though. They don't just tell if you've opened an email. They can also collect things like your device type, your browser, the operating system, the time of the visit, and a whole bunch more. Let me just give you a couple examples of this. Here's an email to me from IO Interactive. And if you look here, this is the privacy panel within the settings for the mail app and you see it has protect mail activity. If I just turn that off a second, hide IP address, hides my IP address whenever I load those remote images, block all remote content. If I click that, you'll see the picture just disappeared. If I move this up out of the way, you can see Sean Bean has disappeared. Those images are stored remotely. So that's that side of it. Let's also look at another email server that I use, hey.com. Now hey is fantastic. It's just a revolution in terms of how I use email. And what they do is they block spy tracker pixels. So I've got an email here from Webflow, but as you can see at the top, they've blocked a tracker within this thread from SendGrid, which is a big email distribution platform. And it'll tell Webflow things like if I opened the email, when I opened the email, where I'm located, and how I opened it, phone, computer, etc. And I notice here this little gray box, that's probably where the Webflow logo should be. Perhaps that is the tracking image itself. It's not a one by one pixel. They use the whole image to do it. Maybe, I'm not sure. So look, that's email in a nutshell. Let's talk about web browsers. When you go to a website, it is the digital equivalent of walking into someone's house. You're on their turf and they get to see you, smell you, learn about you. They serve you a nice cup of coffee and a cookie. See what I did? Now there's a few different types of cookies. There's okay cookies and there's not so okay ones. Let's get the okay ones out of the way. Session cookies. When you log into a website, they give you a session cookie, which lasts for your entire session online. And when you log out or kill that session, usually that token or cookie gets destroyed. The next time you come and visit, you get a new one. When you log into a website, if you take that session cookie and then give it to someone else, they can just put that into their browser and log in as you. It's that easy. So never give those away. The cookies that we want to avoid are the tracking cookies, the ones used for e-commerce. And don't get me wrong, they absolutely have their use. Sometimes I actually take advantage of them so that I can try and get better deals on things. But remember, we're looking at this from an investigation standpoint. 
These cookies don't die when you leave the site. They follow you around the internet and report back to a whole bunch of companies about where you've been and what you've done. Now, all the modern browsers have done a lot of heavy lifting around persistent cookies like this, but honestly, they're rarely perfect. And a lot of the advertising companies have figured out other ways to get around it anyway. Now, let's just look at Wired. Wired's one of my favorite websites. I love coming here to read about all the latest goings on. And when we come here, we get this pop-up that says, we care about your privacy. We and our 167 partners store and access information, blah, blah, blah. 167 is actually quite low. I was on a website recently and they had 2000 partners. <laughs> Incredible. Let's just click on list of partners. And here we go. We can filter these. And the filters are quite interesting. So store and access information on a device personalized ads, precise geolocation, actively scan device characteristics for identification, ensure security, prevent and detect fraud, fair enough, match and combine data from other data sources. And here are all the companies that are taking part on Wired's website. So that's a whole lot of reach for a whole lot of companies. And if we click on show purposes, you can see a whole bunch of different options here. You can turn these on or off and then confirm your choices. You can come down here though and read through these. And I recommend you come to Wired or any website where you see these pop-ups and just have a read through some of this language so you can really grasp what's going on. All these companies are real companies with hundreds and maybe thousands of employees all trying to track people and how they behave online all the time so they can sell that data and make money, which is, their right to try and make money. But when we're investigating, we don't want to be tracked around the internet. We don't want these guys knowing where we're going and what web pages we're looking at because that's what's going to happen. If you leave the cookies in your browser, it's going to know where you've been. So that's cookies. Next is HTML5's Canvas feature. This was initially invented as a way to draw animations on websites but now it's mostly used as an advanced fingerprinting tool. And when you access a website with canvas fingerprinting, your browser makes a hidden image. And because of different hardware and different graphics and settings variations, your browser displays the image very distinctively from other websites, which gives your browser a very unique digital footprint. It's also highly accurate, especially if you combine it with other tracking information. As we saw with cookies, they compare this to other data that they have. Now this website here, browserleaks.com, helps us see canvas fingerprinting. There's my signature. There's the uniqueness of my browser. And I'm using a pretty vanilla version of Safari. Like I turned on this Mac, open Safari. I have Grammarly installed and that's it. So this isn't some super customized version of Safari. It's pretty much out of the box with Grammarly installed. And look, it says 47 out of 156,000 user agents have the same signature as me. That's a very small pool. And it says, it's very likely you're using Safari and you're on a Mac. Yeah. And since the HTML5 canvas element has valid uses, restricting it completely isn't really an effective anti-tracking approach. And also unlike cookies, which you can erase or block, canvas fingerprinting doesn't need you to add anything to your browser. It just happens. So it's one of the hardest ones to evade. So we talked about email and web browsers. What's the risk here? All of this tracking technology can be abused by nation states and powerful companies. Data brokers sell it and pass it around. They're allowed to cross-reference it with other data because it's part of the terms and conditions of the site, or maybe you click the accept all cookies button. But ultimately you have no idea what's going on at any of those companies. If they're in China, then the Chinese government owns all of that data. If they're in the USA, who has notoriously poor privacy laws, then you can bet your bottom dollar your data is just being passed around. And that's when governments and malicious actors can sweep it up and use it as they see fit. You only have to look at the Cambridge Analytica scandal to see stuff like this in action. So what can we do to help us investigate a little bit more safely online? Well, here's a few tips. None of these on their own are bulletproof. You have to use them all. And even then, if someone has enough resources, they will absolutely find you. So use a fresh virtual machine for each investigation, burn down the old one, 
and off we go with the new one. Use proxies, VPNs, and Tor to help protect and route your internet traffic. Don't log on to anything linked to you. Use a private browsing mode like incognito mode and clear your cookies. Block remote images from loading and emails. And if you need to investigate at scale, perhaps you run a team of investigators and you don't wanna bother with all the overhead and admin and mistakes that people are gonna make, doing all those things that I just mentioned, it's probably worthwhile investigating some sort of paid managed attribution service to handle all the virtual machines and privacy aspects for you. Now, people can still make the mistake of logging into their personal Facebook with inside those managed sessions, that's bad practice, but it's much simpler to run investigations in that way. So that's it. I'm gonna go shut down my computer, cut all the cables and hide away in a cave. Until next time.